Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive Channel. There has been a lot of talk lately about Whitney Houston's longtime friend and former lover, Robin Crawford. Robin actually discussed her relationship with Whitney in detail in her new book, A Song For You, My Life With Whitney Houston. Now, Whitney's relationship with Robin really wasn't a secret because it has been out in the open for years now, but I did question Robin's motives for now speaking out about Whitney after being silent for so long. I didn't know if her intentions were for money or because she just wanted to exploit her legacy. I didn't know her intentions and therefore I didn't trust her at first. However, I got a chance to watch her interview with Wendy Williams and my perspective on her did change because I realized she wasn't trying to expose Whitney or capitalize off of her death the way a lot of people around Whitney have. She basically is trying to show a different side to Whitney, a more human side, the side that we haven't really seen because all we know about Whitney is her great voice and the scandal surrounding her personal life. But the general public didn't really know the type of person Whitney was outside of all of that. And Robin decided to speak up now because she saw a lot of inaccurate information that was put out there. And she kind of felt like it was her duty to at least reveal the type of person Whitney was. So in this book, she's not by any means slandering Whitney. She's actually very respectful when she talks about Whitney, but she's not afraid to tell the truth. And she's not afraid to paint her in the realest way possible because all the movies and the books written about Whitney and the documentaries that have been put out there haven't really portrayed her in the most accurate way. And also Robin hasn't been portrayed accurately either. So she's speaking up now so she can kind of set the record straight. So recently she did do an interview with Jada Pinkett Smith on her show, Red Table Talk. And I got a chance to watch it. And it was quite interesting because Robin did talk about the dynamics of her relationship with Whitney. And she also opened up about the toxic marriage that Whitney had with Bobby. The toxicity surrounding Whitney's life was kind of what made her walk away. She didn't walk away because of Bobby. She walked away because everything got too chaotic and it was draining at that point. But before I touch more on that, I am gonna talk about how Robin met Whitney. Robin said in her interview on Red Table Talk that she met Whitney at a community development center when they were teens. They did build a friendship and they also built a physical relationship while they were at the camp. Robin said she had a physical relationship with Whitney for two years, but Whitney decided to stop being physical because Whitney saw where her career was going and she knew that the public wouldn't embrace that. Also, Whitney's mother, Sissy, wasn't too fond of her closeness with Robin. But Whitney's mom had a little, I call it fever, about our closeness. Right. But I always sensed a bitterness in her mom because I thought her daughter is so awesome right. that there was so much to be joyful about. If anything, Whitney would listen to me and that would bother yeah. Mrs. Houston. Mm -hmm. But I think the only reason why Whitney listened to me is because I listened, listened to, to her. her. Another reason why Whitney stopped being intimate with Robin is because of her spiritual beliefs. She did give Robin a Bible, and in that Bible, they made promises to each other and they wrote letters to each other. And Whitney said that she wanted Robin to love her unconditionally, and Robin decided to do just that. And I kept. Is that the actual Bible? This is, this is it. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. So you guys wrote each other. We inscribed on the back of the book because God was there too. Yeah. But I wasn't blindsided by her saying that we should not be physical anymore. What she chose, her path to sing, that was a gift that she was blessed with. And she wanted to serve she said love me unconditional there it is she was worth that right whitney and robin continued to feel possessive towards each other years after they ended their physical relationship whitney grew suspicious that robin had slept with a backup dancer and angrily confronted her she was really upset and my bible i kept it over my bed and she just grabbed it and ripped out the back page and she started tearing it up. 
ripping it little pieces. Did she ever explain why? Whitney wasn't an explainer. People will think, oh, she was jealous, or that's jealousy. No. no. It is possessive yeah. and protective. protective. I thought this part of the interview was quite interesting to kind of see how possessive Whitney was over Robin. But when you think about it, Robin was really Whitney's only true friend. And around this time, she was a huge star and there weren't a lot of people she would let in. So she probably felt overprotective of her because she needed her. That was her confidant. She didn't want anybody taking her friend away from her. And even though she stopped being physical with her, she still had some emotional ties to her. So that explains her possessiveness. But Whitney did move on to date other people. In fact, she did have a relationship with Jermaine Jackson. While she was working on her first album, she was in the studio with Jermaine and they did grow close. However, Jermaine was married. He was still married to his first wife, Hazel Gordy, who happens to be the daughter of Barry Gordy. Jermaine and Whitney did carry on their affair for a while, but Jermaine started to grow distant from Whitney because he didn't want to leave his wife for her. Whitney was heartbroken about this, and the whole affair did inspire her song, Saving All My Love For You. Saving All My Love For You was one of the big ballads that Whitney had in the 80s. And in the music video, you could kind of see a man who happens to look just like Jermaine. So Whitney was very intentional with who she was directing this song to. And I have to say, Saving All My Love For You is definitely one of the most romantic side chick anthems of all time. <laughs> anyway, after Whitney got over Jermaine, she did date another celebrity. She was actually in a relationship with the comedian Eddie Murphy during the 80s. And according to Robin, Eddie showered Whitney with gifts. In fact, he gave her a very expensive diamond ring that was more valuable than the ring Bobby gave Whitney. Now, the ring Eddie gave Whitney was allegedly supposed to be an engagement ring, but Eddie and Whitney's relationship didn't last because Eddie was very hot and cold with Whitney. One day it seemed like he was into her and the next day it seemed like he wasn't interested. One time Whitney prepared a romantic dinner for Eddie but he stood her up and another time Whitney showed up to Eddie Murphy's mansion in her lingerie and fur coat but Eddie sent his security to turn her away. He said he was too busy to have relations with Whitney that night. So Whitney was very devastated by this rejection and after this she allegedly went on a two day drug binge and she came home crying to Robin and said why don't they want me? Whitney couldn't understand why the man she fell for did not love her the same way so it was very heartbreaking for her. After Whitney moved on from her relationship with Eddie she started to date her side piece Bobby Brown. Yes if you don't know Bobby Brown was actually Whitney's backup while she was dating Eddie. Whitney and Bobby fell hard for each other and they eventually got married, but interestingly enough, Eddie Murphy called Whitney on her wedding day to tell her not to marry Bobby. Now it's very possible Eddie might have had a premonition about her marriage to Bobby, but Whitney wasn't trying to hear it because Eddie showed that he was clearly disinterested in Whitney. So she was like, why is he calling me on my wedding day to tell me not to marry somebody I love? Forget him. So she went on to marry Bobby and Robin was her maid of honor at her wedding. Robin, however, had an uneasy feeling about Bobby herself, but she didn't interfere because she wanted to support Whitney. Were you ready for her to be married? Having her cement her life for the rest of her life with someone else. Yeah, if if I if mean, that's what if she that's wanted. what if that's what she wanted, I would be there for her. And I hoped that it would be fruitful for her. Did you have any feelings about her marrying Bobby? She told me she loved him. I had heard the rumors about him. Right. When she told me that he had asked her to marry him, and I asked her, do you love him? And she said, yeah, I do. I love him. And then she asked me, and I was not ready for this question. Right. Do you think he loves me? And I said, honestly, Nip, 
I really don't know no. him that well. Right. It's very interesting that Whitney would ask that, but if you look at her past relationships and see how some of the men have rejected her, it's understandable that she would question whether or not he truly loved her. Now, Whitney and Bobby's relationship was very toxic and their drug use had a huge part to play in why their marriage was so chaotic. Robin did say that Bobby's behavior was oftentimes erratic and she did hint that there was some physical abuse going on in their marriage. I know that when she came back from her honeymoon mm -hmm. and she had that gash on her face. Yep. Did she ever explain to you how that gash got there? I asked her. She said, I threw a glass against the wall and it shattered and, and I got cut. Right. But the cut was like from here to there. It was about three, four inches long. Flying glass doesn't do, do that. that. So, but I never pressed her. But the more I saw and heard and the messier it got, I thought she'd get tired of it. Whitney went to surprise Bobby in Atlanta. After knocking on his door several times, out comes Bobby in a rage saying, I don't want you here. And he spit in her face. She ran down the hall and Bobby picked up a glass and threw it. And Whitney picked up the phone to call her father. That's when Bobby snatched the phone from her and hit her over the head with it. We, Whitney and Bobby's marriage was a mess, and I'm really sad that Whitney had to go through that, but there was a lot going on in her life, and Robin herself couldn't really stay around to deal with the chaos that was going on in her circle, so she did leave. But when she left Whitney's side, it seemed as if things did go downhill, and unfortunately, years later, Whitney and her daughter, Bobby Christina, passed away, and it was really sad. When Whitney passed, it was, I was flooded with emotions. I was angry. Yeah. I just had to get myself together. After that fateful day, you know, my life was filled with strangers walking up to me, feeling like had I been there, she'd still be here. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's a lot to even pull in. But what I do know is that she would not have been alone. When Chrissy left us, I felt for her without her mom. Yeah. Because I had witnessed the bond that they shared in the studio right. on stage. She loved that child. And that little girl loved her mother. Yeah. So when her mom left, I knew she was lonely, yeah. but I honestly believed that she would be okay. I wanted to believe that her hand was being held. Yeah. This part of the interview was very sad because Whitney's story was so tragic and it was even more tragic that her daughter lost her life in the same way. Robin still carries the burden of Whitney's death with her, but she wrote her book because she wanted to show who the real Whitney Houston was. Anyway, tell me what you all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.